all how easy it is to make meatloaf taste delicious. Not everybody knows how to make meatloaf. Not everybody knows how to make it taste delicious. In this video today, I'm gonna show you all how to make your meatloaf be juicy. It's gonna be packed with flavor and so delicious. This recipe is so easy. It doesn't require a lot of ingredients. If you make it Gina Young style, your taste buds will love you for this recipe. The weather is cold and you know, it's winter time. You need a nice hearty meal that's gonna kinda stick to your bones that everyone's gonna love. This is the recipe. Here's the ingredients you're gonna need. You will need some ground beef. This is an 80-20 ground beef. Use any kind of beef you want. I have ground turkey here and I also have a ground sausage. If you don't eat pork, you can by all means leave the pork out if you don't eat it, okay? Just use the beef and the turkey, okay? So now you're gonna need a really interesting ingredient here, corn flake crumbs. Instead of bread crumbs, we're using corn flake crumbs. We're gonna be using some ketchup. We're also gonna use some tomato paste, beautiful bell peppers, a nice sweet Vidalia onion. We do have two large eggs here and some spices to make that baby taste good. Salt, pepper, garlic, and onion powder, paprika, and a little bit of milk. Make sure your hands are impeccably clean. Let's get started with this amazing recipe, Jeannie Young style. So the first thing that I wanna do, let's go ahead and put our meat into a nice large bowl. I hope y'all are having a great day today. So now, did you know that this whole month of December, Jeannie Young's gonna be showing you all how to make delicious winter recipes. Like I said, things like um, chili, chicken and dumplings, uh, meatloaf, you know, things like that on that line. But I'm also gonna be showing you all how to make the famous Jeannie Young style Christmas recipes as well. If you all haven't seen my video for how to make um, the Christmas peanut butter fudge, be sure to check that video out. You're gonna absolutely love it. It only has two ingredients. Okay, so now there is the beautiful turkey that's gonna make this meat nice, soft, and supple. We have ground beef, and like I said, when it comes to the sausage, it's really optional, okay? So the next thing we're gonna do, let's just set this here in this bowl, but the next thing I do want to do is get started chopping up some veggies, okay? Now, you have the option to, when you put these bell peppers and onions in, you can put them in raw if you wanted to. There are times that I make a good, delicious meatloaf and it's raw, but sometimes I will saute the vegetables like we're gonna do today in this video and it really bumps up your recipe. Okay, so today we're going to cut the desired amount of bell peppers that we would like to use, and then we're gonna put a little bit of vegetable oil in the pan, saute these babies up until they're nice and soft and the onions are translucent. Let's talk about what difference it makes if you saute the vegetables versus letting the vegetables cook in the meatloaf as it bakes into the oven. I personally think when you saute up bell peppers and onions in a pan, whether you're using butter or oil, it makes them nice and sweet. Oh my goodness, it gives them a great taste. You all have tasted sauteed bell peppers and onions. They are simply delicious. But what I'm gonna want for you all to do is after you saute them up, let's go ahead and take them, throw them in the refrigerator, right? Cool them down a little bit because we don't want our hot sauteed vegetables to mix in with that egg that's gonna be in our mixture and we turn around and make scrambled eggs. So we're gonna cool the mixture down before it goes into the mix. Baby, let's go ahead and put our bell peppers right into a saute pan. We're gonna cook them until the peppers begin to get nice and soft and the onions get beautiful and translucent where you can see through them. Time to cut some onion. Now this is, it, this is quite a big onion, so really I'm not gonna use this whole onion. I'll probably use just about half of it. And I'm gonna chop it the same size we, you know, chopped up our bell pepper. This is gonna go right into the same pan and we're gonna get it nice and cooked. And then when I come back, we're gonna throw all our ingredients in with our meat and I'm gonna show you how you can make the most juiciest, moist, 
flavorful meatloaf ever, Jeannie Young said. Time to season the meat, all right? I have found years and years ago that using cornflake crumbs is the best in meatloaf. I just have to say it hands down. You can use rolled oats, you can use crackers, you can use the Ritz crackers, the saltine crackers, you can use all kinds of stuff. There's people that even use the dried potato flakes. So many different things that you can use, but I found out that these cornflake crumbs are delicious. Now, Gina, what if I can't find these in my local market? I live so-and-so and I can't find them. If you can't find them, let me tell you what you need to do. Um, go out to your local market. I'm sure you can find some cornflakes, not frosted flakes. Come on, not frosted flakes. Regular cornflakes and you crumble these babies up until they're nice and fine. You can even put them in a food processor or put them in a Ziploc bag, bang the daylights out of them until you get crumbs. Delicious meatloaf. Let's get some in there. I'd like to say between a half a cup and a cup, okay? It depends on how much you wanna put in there. But like I said, it may, helps to make it airy and fluffy and just beautifully delicious. Really, it does. Okay, so now that I have that in there, what I'd like to do is one of my tricks that grandmom would do. My grandmom would put milk over top of her bread crumbs or her cracker crumbs, whatever she was using. And it helps to, you're, you're gonna see what it does to the cornflakes, okay? It helps to make a nice moist meatloaf. How much, just get you some, just enough to cover the, uh, you know, your crackers or whatever type of crumbs you're using, okay? Let's crack up two nice eggs, two large eggs, okay? We're gonna put it right in here. This helps to bind together your meatloaf. Help to hold it together in its loaf form. Make sure your eggs are nice and uh, fresh and there's no shells. That's why I always like to crack it in a separate bowl. Beautiful eggs we have today. Listen, I hope y'all are having a great day today. I'm going to ask you a question. Is there anybody out there that struggles making a good meatloaf? If you struggle making a good meatloaf, take some notes with this recipe. You're going to love it. You're going to love it. I know you are. Okay, we're going to put some ketchup. There have been times where I'll turn around and put ketchup and mustard, but I'm kind of veering away from putting mustard in it. You know, you kind of learn as you go. And all the years that I make it, it seems like it just keeps getting better and better and better. So I'm not putting mustard in, but if you would like to try it with a little bit, just about a teaspoon, throw you some in, okay? I've done it for years. Salt. Okay, you don't have to use a lot. All right, we're gonna put some black pepper. Oh yes, it smells good already. Onion powder and a nice amount of it, absolutely. The bell peppers and onions are sauteing up. We're gonna put some paprika in there. That's not smoked paprika. We're gonna put some garlic and a nice amount of it. And then we're gonna go in and mix this up very well. In the meantime, between time, we got some veggies on the stove. We need to check on. The bell peppers and onions are sauteing up. Oh, I'd like to say these onions will be nice and translucent in about two or three minutes and then I'll turn around and I will take this right off of the burner, set it into a bowl, put it in the refrigerator just for a few minutes to cool down before it goes into our mixture, just like so. Tell me your favorite part of meatloaf. Do you love meatloaf? Did you grow up eating meatloaf like I did? My favorite part of meatloaf is when the meatloaf cools down, you turn around and make a sandwich out of it. Put some mayonnaise. Any kind of mayonnaise, Miracle Whip, you know, whatever kind you like. Put mayonnaise on one part, a nice slice of the meatloaf on, on your bread, and just eat it cold. It is the best thing ever. I live for a cold meatloaf sandwich, and I can't wait till I cook this. It gets cold, and then I can make a meatloaf sandwich. Are you like that? Is anybody in the comment section like that? So I put gloves on. Normally I don't put gloves on, but I do have a Band-Aid on my left hand. So I didn't want to dig right in and, you know, go in and mix this meat up with the Band-Aid. So I figured, well, let me go ahead and put some gloves on because I like to dig in this way and get it nice and mixed up. I feel like it gets really mixed up very well. And the texture is, is the texture that I'm looking for when I use my hands. So now I want to talk about something that's really honestly very important. Grandma Lucille 
would always say, don't handle it too much. Handling this meat too much, whether you're making meatballs or meatloaf, will make it uh, tough. We don't want this to be tough by all means. We want it to always be soft, supple, tender, and juicy. And the heat from your hands can make this tough. So basically what you want to do is do what you can, quick as you can, to get everything nice and mixed in and then leave it alone. Okay, and so I'm, I'm pretty good with it right now. All of the spices are mixed in. I'm going to leave it alone. We're going to let those bell peppers cool down. And when I come back, they'll be mixed in. The bell peppers have cooled down just enough. You may see a little steam because naturally they're hitting the um, cold meat. But they've cooled down enough to where we can mix them in. And when I come back, I'm going to show you how easy it is to make the loaf itself. So I have a 9 by 12 baking pan, and all I like to do, this is what I normally like to do. I like to, um, if y'all can see, I just like to let it fall into the pan how it may, okay? And then really, it's already a loaf, and then you just kind of copy this form, okay? You can make it look like a football if you want. Make it, My grandma would make hers into a square, and she would use a square pan, you know? Uh, but I like to make it into somewhat of a loaf. And you just push the sides to make it high, push it down to make it low, you know, do like this, okay? So have fun. But one thing that I want you to do is make sure if there's any cracks in this meatloaf that you smooth it out by using your finger. Guess why? Because when this baby cooks up, all your juices are going to come out if you didn't smooth out the um, cracks that's in it. Let's say, for instance, I see a crack here, okay? Smooth it out. Okay, I see a crack here. Smooth it out, and you take your time to smooth out all the cracks, just like so. We're gonna put about a half a cup of water down in there, and that's it. How simple. Take a look at my beautiful loaf, and you can tell that I really took time to smooth it out, just like so. We're gonna take some water. I always do. Don't pour it on top of it. Just pour it in your pan. It, it kind of gets the meatloaf going, and honestly, I'm gonna turn this um, sink off. It helps for your meatloaf not to stick to the pan, because as we all know, sometimes when you make a meatloaf, cooking it at a high temperature, it can stick to the bottom of your pan, but uh, problem solved. Put a little bit of water, it'll eventually evaporate. By the time that water evaporates, no worries, you'll have some oil in there and it won't stick. Okay, so that's my little trick, and it helps to keep it nice and moist. So now, before we put this into the oven, I want to talk about, we are going to be putting an amazing sauce on the top. The sauce is just going to consist of ketchup and a little bit of tomato paste, okay? Mix the two together, paint it on there like the last half an hour of the cooking process. Delicious, right? You can put a little bit of uh, honey in there if you want it to, too. Or you can be that person, my husband, he loves it with um, some type of gravy. So I may make some gravy later on tonight that he can just pour onto his. Into the oven, 350 degrees. Merch check. Jeannie Young's wearing merch. Jeannie Young's wearing the merch. If you didn't know about Jeannie Young's merch, you must be under a rock. So now this here, this here, this merch is, is fancy, y'all. It's fancy. This has the GY logo, the Gina Young logo. And then around here, it says Gina Young style. And in the back, it says Gina Young style. And I love it. Get yours. Get yours if you want to look fly this winter, spring, summer, and fall all year round. We got the hoodies, the pullover hoodies, zip up hoodies, t shirts, all different. Guys, listen, book bags. There's coffee cups, drinking glasses, there's bucket hats. It's so much fun to go over and check out the merch. If you haven't purchased it, you might want to get some. Everybody's wearing it. It's selling out of the roof. Be sure to get your Gina Young merch. You're going to love it. So now, so many people like to ask me, Gina, but where can I find the merch? Listen, this video here that you're watching, right underneath the video, you're going to see the link. You're going to see the link to uh, Jeannie Young merch. And then also, if you go to my description, there's also a link that'll take you right there. And when you click on it, it, it opens up a world of amazing stuff. So much stuff. I, I know you're going to want it.
Whether you're female, you're male, whoever you are, your grandma, grandpa, you're going to want to get it for somebody because it's it's so nice and it feels so nice on your skin. My husband wore a hoodie the other day and he would, he, he, listen, y'all, he looks so nice. He had a blue, black and white hoodie on it. It said Gina Young's down. I was like, well, you go, right? So have fun over there checking it out. Come on, take a look. I got um, just equal parts of the tomato paste. And the ketchup, like I said, if you want to put a little bit of honey in here, you can, but really you don't have to. This tomato paste and the ketchup does the job. And then we're going to take this and we're going to smear it on like that last half an hour, okay? But me personally, there's people that like to cook their meatloaf with this on it, but I, I don't. I feel like it gets like a funny consistency. Wait until your meatloaf is almost cooked. Give it a half an hour and put this on. Cook to perfection. Take a look at this. Oh, so beautiful. And look at that juice, keeping it nice and juicy. So now we take our little concoction that we made that tastes ever so good. We're going to paint it as much or as least as you would like to put on. That's what you're going to do. Okay. And if your family wants gravy, you're going to have to make up some gravy. Make some homemade gravy. <laughs> okay. So now guess what happens? This goes back into the oven for about, oh, another half an hour. And when I come back, we're going to taste it. I'm going to say an amazing prayer. And it's done. Take a look and you can see that I poured off the liquid that is at the bottom. Now listen, very, very important that you let it rest before you cut it. If you let it rest before you cut it, all your juices aren't going to run out on you. But if it's hot and you decide to cut it, all your juices are going to run out. Peas and mashed potatoes. You have to have the two. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe. Tell your family and friends and everyone you know, tell the world what Jeannie Young's doing in this kitchen on a daily basis. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this beautiful meal. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. I just want to show you the inside, just how beautiful and juicy. That is what we like to call a juicy meatloaf. Gina Young style, make you some. Amen. Once again, to my beautiful prayer, you need this recipe. It's cold outside. Make you some meatloaf, Jeannie Young style. I'm going in. I'm not, y'all, I'm not even making a plate. You hear me? Ooh, and guess what? I made the gravy. I made the gravy. My husband loves it. Ooh, dippity dip, dip, dip. Mmm, mmm, mm. mm. Like a symphony being played on my taste buds. Make you some. Enjoy the recipe. Look forward to all of the holiday recipes I'm doing this month. God bless. Good night.